Why are we in the UFC, Dana? Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, always. <laughs> you know, nothing ever going on at the UFC. Yeah. Can you just talk us through the timeline of events that led oh, to Van Silva being pulled out of the fight with Chelsea Sonnen and then Vitor Belfort being put into that fight at 175? So we did the press conference that day with everybody. And uh, when the press conference ended, the uh, Nevada State Athletic Commission showed up at Van gym to uh, do a random drug test, and uh, when he got there, he, uh, he ran out and jumped in his car and drove away, and then went MIA for a few days. Um, so, obviously when you do that, it did not put him in a good good place with the commission, so we knew he wasn't gonna get licensed. So we, we contacted Chael and Vitor. Of course, Chael said yes immediately to the fight, and. Uh, now it's all riding on whether uh, Vitor can get licensed by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. He'll obviously have to go before them and he'll have to... He's been taking a series of tests leading up to this moment. So he's got a, a history of taking tests and they'll test him and we'll see what they do. What was the decision behind the fight taking place at 2.05 with the winner getting a middleweight title shot? Uh, as far as I know, the fight's at 85. Oh, the fight's not at 205. Not that I'm That's the reports that were coming out. Was it? Yeah. yeah. Who said it? <laughs> I don't know what uh, the outlet was. MMA junkie. Junkie. All the, all the major uh, yeah. outlets said yeah. that the fight was MMA fight fight in all the first reports are saying 205. So that you confirm that the fight will take place at middleweight. As far as I know, it's 85. As long as Vito can but, actually, yeah. you know, maybe Lorenzo talked to those two and maybe they both wanted to fight at 205. But it doesn't really make sense for it to have, you know, any implications whatsoever at 85 it takes place at 205. So, going back to Vandalay though, um, what is it? Where does this leave him in regards to his future? Does not leave him in a good position. It leaves him in a very bad position. Have you spoken to him? Uh, just in text. What did he say to you? Not much. Not much that made sense. He's planning on releasing a video to explain his side of things later on today. Cool. <laughs> He can shoot all the videos he wants, he's in trouble. Do you think he'll fight against the UFC? I don't know, we'll see what happens. Next uh, one, boys. He's gonna have to get, uh, no, it's all right, let Yo. these guys ask whatever they want. Okay. It's, uh, he's gonna, uh, he's gonna have a hard time getting licensed again. Hard time. So we'll see what happens. Dana, could you give us an update on uh, why the contract hasn't been signed between Alexander Gustafsson and John Jones? Uh, it is. It is signed. signed his. <laughs> yeah, but or, or <laughs> why why Jones. Jones hasn't signed? Is there any update on what what delays? Ask John Jones. <laughs> Do you have any ideas for a location yet? For the fight, it'll be <coughs> Vegas, okay. in either August or September. Then, um, you are, you, are, you are doing a European tour right now, and doing uh, like Sweden, Germany. Um, we are really waiting in Holland to get our first UFC event, or at least have it broadcasted in. So Netflix. are we, believe me. So are we. We're, what do you got, Gary? We're talking about. It's. Uh, I mean, it's, we haven't figured it out yet, but we'll, 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 we'll get around to it. Don't worry. Cool. We spoke before. And right? believe me, we know how big it is. We've talked about it. We we get it. Believe me. Cool. Thanks. Dana George St. Pierre is here. Have you spoken with him this week? Um. Yeah. On the, uh, on the updates? Uh, on the you know, his knee is in bad shape. I don't know if you saw on stage, but his knee is very swollen, and, you know, he's going through that process. It's going to, you know, how long has it been since he had the surgery? Like a month? You know, he's he's another year. So he'll be out for a year. <coughs> on uh, Gina Carano, also, you said you were going to talk to her. I still have a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. I still haven't made that phone call. It's funny, today I was reading my Twitter timeline, and people, <laughs> people were all saying, call Gina. Call Gina. Do you intend on making the phone call? I do. Okay. Yeah, I've been a little busy. I, I, I didn't have, I had a, I didn't expect the week that I had, uh, you know. <coughs> there has been some talk in Finland about a UFC event in Helsinki. Any info on this? I believe that is true. And, uh, We've had lots of requests for yeah. an event in uh, Helsinki. And again, it's on the map. I mean, the, the great thing about this, this is a great conversation for everybody because more and more cities, more and more countries, want to have a UFC event there, but, you know, obviously we're limited by resources, and we can't be everywhere, and we, there's only so many weeks of the year, but, but uh, we're, we're trying. talking to all of them, we're trying our best to get around, and really we are. Right. Dana, is there a, an update on your health in regards to the Meniere's disease? Amazing. Because I know that you've got your treatment here in Germany, right? <laughs> I love it. Yeah, Germany saved me. Have you had any follow-up treatment since? No. Nope. That's it. 
I, I had to be on this crazy diet and all this other stuff, you know, and uh, nothing now. No attacks. I eat just as bad as I used to, and, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I haven't had no, not even close to having an attack. And, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but the way you get the treatment, you have to be recommended by somebody that's already taken the treatment, right? right? The amount of calls I get from people now and emails with Meniere's disease is it's crazy. Um, but yeah, you have to be referred to this place. Didn't you also try and get Freddie Roach to take uh, the same or similar treatment? And I what did. was the result of that conversation? I think Freddie was, uh, I don't know, yeah, I don't think he was, I think he was nervous about it for some reason. Yeah. If I was Freddie, I'd have been there the next day. It's pretty amazing. Again, not that it could help Freddie, but who knows. Yeah. But when A-Rod called me, he said, I don't know if this is going to help you either, but you should try it. And I did, and it did. Then recently the news broke that uh, Unkan Zingano returns. She uh, uh, will technically still be the number one contender, but will fight, but will have another fight before she gets a title shot. Uh, Who's this? Uh, Kat Zingano. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it, it seemed a little bit uh, contradictory. She has the number one contender status, but she's having to fight again. because Ronda, here's the thing. Ronda, she's not ready now. Ronda's going to fight, you know, and then Ronda's going to take some time off. Okay. So... She's been out for a long time, so it does make sense for her to come back, get a fight, reintroduce her to everybody because she's been gone for so long. And, uh, you know, if she came in and fought for the title and won it, she'd have to fight everybody anyway. So that, that's the way I always look at it. These guys that say, well, I'm going to wait. Well, if you believe you're going to win the title, you're going to have to fight all these people at some point anyway. You might as well do it now. And I think it's, I think it's 100% in her best interest. Uh, to, to do this fight first, you know she's coming off a a real hard time. Yeah. You know, get a good get a good tune up fight in there. Like I said, reintroduce her to everybody and put her on a big fox card or something. And Is there any updates on a potential uh, opponent? Not yet, <clears throat> but I, I've been I've been talking to her quite a bit. She's she's she's, she's getting back. And how's she doing after? Like you said, she's gone through some hard times. How's she doing? Yeah, I mean take away the knee surgery alone and then all the other things that have happened to her in, in, in the last couple of years it's just it's horrible so you know this, this is a good thing for her it's not a negative thing and she's the number one contender but she'd just be waiting for Ronda to come back so it doesn't make sense okay in about the and grooves on this weekend at Wembley in England but they're actually in Wembley Stadium and there's a lot of buzz around it a lot of people are maybe even wondering why there's such a buzz around it because maybe these two guys aren't as active or as impressed when boxing is the boxing fights we've seen in the States. You're trying really hard to break into the market over here in the UK and in Europe. Does it kind of annoy you a little bit to see these two guys such a buzz, such a hype around them? I think it's eight million for one guy, two million for another guy selling out Wembley Stadium. Yeah, not at all. Uh, you know, th there's big there's so few big boxing fights that happen. It's like when people ask me that all the time about, you know, what do you think about Floyd doing two point five million buys and what do you think about these guys they do big fights once a year. Imagine if I did a fight once or twice a year. You know what I mean? If you look at the, 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 uh, the guys that we have in the UFC and a lot of fights that people are looking forward to right now, and if I only did it once or twice a year, how much buzz there would be around it and how big it would be. We're doing it 44 times a year all over the world, you know, so it's, it's totally different. Um, but I, I don't get upset about it. Good for them, man. Good for them. I hope they, they kill it and they all make a lot of money. What's Thanks. it like for you to come back to Germany after so, so many years? And what are the main differences you've noticed since you've been here? Well, I mean, every time we come back here, uh, you know, more and more people know about the UFC, more and more people <coughs> are into mixed martial arts. And I've never been to Berlin, so I was excited to come to Berlin. It's a city I've always wanted to, I've always wanted to check out. Um, and we're just, you know, as we continue to, to, to go to all these different cities in Europe and spread the word and, you know, educate... Uh, the masses about mixed martial arts. It's, it's no different than what we did in the States. If you think about our first fight, first, you know, a few fights, we sold like 3,500 tickets our first few fights, you know, and to come into, into Germany and uh, do 7,000 and, and, and uh, what did we do the last two times? We were in Cologne and, uh, you 13, know, seven. 13 in Cologne and 18 in yeah. Uh, yeah. So as we continue to, to, to move around, and you guys know, I mean, I'm preaching to the choir in here. What really sells this thing and what really gets people over is the live event. You know, it's great on TV and it's fun to watch. You get your house full of your friends and you, you all kick in and you watch it. But when you see this thing live, 
We never have a situation, and every time we go somewhere, you know, we have some guys coming tomorrow from other arenas to check this thing out that we've never been to. You know, you get some people from television. You get to always have some some very uh, interesting people that we're trying to influence, and nobody walks out of a live UFC event and says, "Yeah, I don't ever want to do this again." You know what I mean? So it's it's our it's our big selling point, and it's uh, it's what I truly believe has helped build this sport what it is today, the live event. Gary said that obviously you know, Berlin is going to be a staple in the calendar uh, moving forward um, as an annual event and of course uh, as you continue to expand, um, Gary said that there will probably be more European events next year than there were this year. Does that also mean that uh, moving forward we'll start to see more double headers um, with events taking place in North and South America combined with European events? Yeah, as, w as we get, uh, as we start to build these infrastructures, you know, like we've done in Europe with Gary and his team, like we've done down in Brazil with Grace and her team, you know, we're going to continue to do this this, uh, you know, in, in all these places around the world. I mean, the the supply and demand for this for this thing right now. Right now, we we're, you know we got a fight going down in Brazil. We could do one in the United States. We could do one here in Berlin, Germany. And I'll tell you what: every time we go to Australia, we sell out, and it's crazy. There could be one in Australia going on right now, and there could definitely be one in England. You know, because England kills it every time we go there too. So yes, I mean, I could see a day where we do do that. Can you see the 24-hour calendar of three events back to back in three different time zones? Uh, yeah, uh, anything is possible now. You know, when we first started this thing, we were doing five events a year. If you told me we had to do six, I'd have said, "Holy shit!" I don't know if we can pull that one off. <laughs> you know, and now look what we're doing. So anything is possible. Dana, um, there's been sort of word that UFC Dublin might be covered on Fox Sports. Uh, is that a possibility? Um, yeah. It, uh, you know, we're. we're we're talking, you know, when we went out and did this fight pass thing, you know, we offered those to Fox first, and Fox wishes they took them now. <laughs> um, but, uh, and it, yeah, probably. Brilliant. A yeah, lot of people are excited about that Dublin fight, man. I mean, it's just, the buzz around that Dublin fight is insane. Yeah, it's crazy. Another question, Dennis, sorry. Um, you mentioned to me after London in the uh, scrum last time that you were going to do, talking about doing the title fight in Europe. Uh, any update or... Is that a possibility by the end of the year? Yeah, no, it definitely is. Uh, you know, it, it, we were looking like we might have the Jones Gustafson fight out here. You know what I mean? Um, but it looks like that's going to be in Vegas in okay. September uh, or uh, <coughs> August or September. But yeah, we'll, we'll see. Where would a likely venue be? I don't know. No, I don't know. Yet. Any potential? A fight? big one. Who would you put in Anybody. title fight? Any any weight class? Anybody? Yeah. You're that confident? Would it be pay per view? Um, yeah, we did a title fight. Probably. I mean, we've done some title fights that were on Big Fox, and you know, um, who knows? Daniel, what are your thoughts about <coughs> a fight uh, between TJ Dillashaw and Uriah Faber? Uh, you know, Uriah Faber is the number two ranked guy in the world. You know. Do you it, like it? I love it. And what do you think, things uh, Uriah Faber? I think that you know, here's 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 the way that I think about that. <coughs> This isn't a team sport. Yes, you train with guys that are that are part of your team, but that's the way boxing has been for years. You know, if you look at a guy like Larry Holmes, he was Muhammad Ali's sparring partner for years. You know, and, and there's a, there's a thousand stories like that in boxing where the guys came up and you know got beat on by the great guys until they became great themselves. And I think that every you know Uriah Faber has never won a title in the UFC, and I guarantee you he wants to. I just don't see him walking away from that. And in, is Asun Sal next for TJ or? Is what? Asun oh, Sal next? I don't know yet. You okay. know, we're still trying to figure that out. Okay. There's a lot of interesting possibilities yeah. in that weight division now. And, uh, you know, people are excited about it. Then what about Russia? You have a lot of bunch of great Russian fighters. The yep. president likes it. The scene is pretty strong in there. So what's the deal? Any we, events in Russia? We like it too. Uh, goes with what Gary just said a minute ago. There's so many places to get to in so little time, so we're trying to figure it out. Just going back to the potential of the fight between John Jones and Gustafsson, there was a lot of talk of it being held in Stockholm. What was the main reason or reasons why it didn't um, take place in Stockholm and why you're looking at Vegas instead? Because, you know, um, at the end of the day, Vegas is still the fight capital of the world. It's still a big destination. I thought that Sweden isn't a big destination, and I believe me, we by no means look at Sweden and say, eh, believe me, we get it and we like it a lot. We're, we're, we're very interested in doing something big in Sweden. 
Um, but the, the, the Jones Gustafsson fight makes makes sense in Vegas. Well, it's not that it doesn't make sense in Sweden either. <laughs> you know, believe me, I'd I'd love to do it there and, and, and see it. It's just when you start looking at pay per view and the time and, and how much how much uh, press we might lose or gain by being in Sweden because of how big it would. I don't know. You know, but these are the things we battle with in the office and try to figure out. You know, you want to do the right thing, but that that's a that, I, I can go both sides of that one. Why do you think John's taking so long to sign that contract? You gotta ask John Jones that. I don't know. Yeah. Sweden is ruled I, out. I for don't sure. like it. I don't like it at all. Sweden is ruled out for sure. No. On the Dublin thing that you mentioned there about it changing to Fox Sports One, would that mean more bets would be added, and it wouldn't be considered the EMEA standard of maybe only nine, ten, eleven bets? We might get thirteen or fourteen for Dublin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, there's not enough fights on that card. You want me to throw three more on there? No, I'm just saying. I'll throw three more on there. Will that make you happy if I put three more fights? Probably. <laughs> Done. You got it. All right, we'll put three more fights on there. So it's. Is there any more fights in the pipeline for UFC Dublin? Because obviously Gunnar is. Uh, yeah, we got opponents. three more coming now. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> just added three fights to the card, so it lives up to the standard of all the other Fox fights. So uh, obviously Ryan had to pull out yesterday. Um, and Gunnar was supposed to. Uh, you mentioned to me that he would get. Gunner's gonna fight. We'll get he'd get a top fight. 15. Well, he has. He's an opponent now. Um, who stepped in? Zach Cummins. Zach Cummins. Zach Cummins. Mm-hmm. Um, are you a little bit disappointed? In what? That Ryan Flair to pull out because you know it's, it was it's a step up in test for Gunnar. It's, it's, it's part of the sport, and and it seems like every other year we get this injury bug, man, and we're going through it again right now. Um, but it's part of the sport. You know, after after what we went through in 2012, yeah, I, it's the first time it had ever happened to us since you know we've been in business since 2001. Now nothing surprises me, and it's just it's just part of the sport. And Dana, are you going to be in Dublin yourself? Because I know you're, you're quite yes, busy. I will be there. Hell yes! Excellent. I can't wait. Dana, some of the first reports of why uh, the delays in Russia are taking place was because of safety reasons. Whether it's true, I'm not sure. Uh, they are having some internal problems. The UFC will be debuting in Mexico, which is also a, a little bit unstable. Uh, are there any extra precautions that are going to be taken for a UFC event in Mexico City? Well, you know, th- there's places. It's not like you know all the places we've been are exactly, you know, the safest places. Uh, con- you know, considering other countries that people come from, like if you're coming from Germany or if you're coming from, you know, the United States and, and Canada. But I mean, look at the events we've held in Brazil. You know, we're going to do just fine in Mexico City too, um, and and that's not one of the concerns with Russia. Okay. You know concerns are what Gary said earlier, there's just not enough time in the day. I think mean, Gary and I were talking about this last night when we, when we first met and sat down um, when I landed, but it, it's like when you try to wrap your brain around all the stuff that's possible and all the things that we could do, then it's trying to figure out how to, like, like you know, me and Lorenzo are two guys. Lorenzo's working on what he's working on, I'm working on what, and now we got Gary, and Gary pretty much covers all of Europe, um, down in uh, uh, the Middle East, um, you know, he's one guy. He's one guy. He's kicking ass for one guy. Certainly. We're doing the best we can do. What was it like to finally bury the hatch here with Ken Shamrock? Um, it was it was it was fine. I actually uh, appreciate the fact that he reached out and said that he wanted to squash it. So, um, you know, I, I think a lot of my beefs with fighters are played up. If you think about it, right now we have five hundred and I think five hundred and five guys under contract. Right? We've had thousands of guys under contract over the last uh, 13 years. And I've had huge blowouts with like four of them, you know? Pretty good ratio. One of the guys um, you had a blowout with um, was Paul Daly. And I know you've spoken about this in the past, but do you... And it wasn't that I had a blowout with Paul Daly. What Paul Daly did was just, yeah. you know, it's unforgivable. You know, you, in, in the history of the UFC, nobody has ever walked up and sucker punched a guy after the fight. It's never happened. It's happened one time and it was with Paul Daly. And um, Paul Daly had had his management write me uh, a letter a few days ago. Really? Yeah. And uh, basically saying, you know, he, he's grown up a lot since that incident. He's been on a win streak. You know, he, he, it's one of his biggest regrets in his life and things like that. And, uh, you know, I showed it to Lorenzo, and Lorenzo's like, it's up to you, brother. What do you want to do? 
It's just it's such a hard one for me. It's a hard one for me. Will you where make you a right decision? <laughs> where, where, where are you right now? Do you, do you think there's a chance, more than a 50% chance, that you I might resign him? I don't know. I, I haven't really had a chance to think about it, you know? Um, if you had to decide right now, what would you say? <laughs> no. No? No. Yeah, you made me decide right now. I say no. Um, I haven't really thought about it. It's just, it's just, uh, it's just one of those things that's hard to forgive. But as you've been in a forgiving mood lately, you know, very unhappy with Ken Shamrock, I thought maybe. Well, let's not get crazy. <laughs> let's not get crazy. Um, Any updates on? I, I, I liked. I always liked Paul Daly. You know, I liked him as a fighter and and the way that he fought and everything else. But I'm telling you, I walked up into the octagon that night when that was going on, and he just didn't give a shit. He didn't give a shit. Do you think that may have been like heat in a moment? But yeah, but you're a professional. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He's the only guy in UFC history that's ever sucker punched somebody after the fight. One guy. Dana. You know? And there's a lot of things that I have forgave in the past. That's a tough one. And that's why is one. Rich Franklin the only guy you didn't say anything wrong about when he joined your competition? I didn't hear it, at least officially. Why about Rich Franklin joining your competition, the, C the vice CEO of 1FC, and you didn't say, it was just very easy, you didn't say anything wrong. Well, Rich Franklin's a good guy. I've always had a good relationship with Rich, um, you know, and he's out there, you know, he's, he's in that next chapter of his career, you know, he's out there, he's building these smoothie stores all throughout California, um, you know, and, and he's doing his thing. I don't ever fault somebody for trying to better their life. It's just how you, it's how you handle it. Rich Franklin's a man, called us up, said I want to talk to you guys, came in, he sat down, and never in the history of me being here will you hear a story where a guy went to better himself and came in and talked to us and we were against it or tried to hurt him. It's not how we operate. All the guys that I've beefed with, the, the Randy Couture's and the other guys, Randy Couture doesn't have the balls to sit down face to face and talk to you about what he wants to do. He'll actually lie to your face, you know? Randy Couture looks like a great guy on paper. The reality of it is not, he's not. He's not a good guy. You can ask anybody that's ever dealt with him. And about GSP, he was very vocal about some powerful people in the business who <coughs> destroyed the business, but he never uh, gave any details about what kind of people or never, no details, no names. What do you mean? GSP said this is the one, uh, some people were one of the reason he left, he quit the sport at least for, for a while, but he never told anyone officially who, who it was and what happened exactly. Can yeah. you share some details? It has nothing to do with me. I have no idea. I never had a beef with that. Other than, you know, when I flipped out that night after the, the Johnny Hendricks fight. I mean, go back and look at anything I ever said about GSP, it was always positive. What an incredible guy he was, and how great he was for his country, and you know, for the sport and the title and everything else. So, I don't know. And finally, we have three series: the Fight Night, Fox, and Pay Per Views. Uh, which should be the most important, valuable for for the fighters? Which one out, out of the out of the three series, the Fox or Pay Per Pay Per View or the Fight Nights, should be the most important for the fighters? They're all important. I mean, whatever card you're on, whether you're headlining or on it. That's the most important card on the planet. I mean, that's that's the. I, I always tell the story about Alexander Gustafsson went in and uh, and fought John Jones up in Toronto, Canada, and nobody gave a shit. They're like, this fight's ridiculous. Who the hell is this guy? Jones is gonna murder him. You know, I heard I heard all the bullshit leading up to that fight. Then when that fight was over, it ended up being the greatest light heavyweight championship fight ever. It was insane. It was so good. Both guys had to dig deep. Gustafsson became a fucking superstar after that thing. After that fight, EA did the cover vote. He beat this guy that nobody gave a shit about. Nobody cared. And, you know, everybody had, you know, all this stuff to talk about that fight with him and Jones. He beat Cain Velasquez, George St. Pierre, Ronda Rousey, um, John Jones. And he didn't just beat him in the vote. He buried him. I mean, the guy became a huge superstar. I don't care what card you're on. There you go. There, there's, there's an example of a, heavy, uh, of a light heavyweight title fight on pay-per-view. Now let's take Matt Brown. Matt Brown fights on a fight night. He headlines it in Cincinnati that airs on Fox Sports 1. You know, he won three in a row. He won four in a row. When's this guy going to get his opportunity? 
He goes out and fights that fight that night and becomes a huge superstar the next day. People are still talking about that fight on my Twitter timeline. And now he's getting a shot at the number one guy in the world at welterweight and could be in line for the next title shot. I don't care where you fight, it's how you fight. You put on a fight like those two put on a fight and the world will be talking about you on Sunday morning. What was the decision to make that the, the title contender fight as opposed to McDonald versus Woodley at 174? Because Robbie Lawler just beat, you know, uh, just had that unbelievable fight for the title. Then he comes off and if he knocks off these two, how do you not give him that title shot again? You know? Any updates on uh, Holly Hall? No. Still, no. still working on her, as far as I know. Have you heard anything from the Diaz brothers yet? Um, yeah. Anything you can go into <laughs> detail about? <laughs> yeah. Or anything productive? Listen, when they're ready, I, I talk to both of them. But when they're ready, you know, you guys will know when they're ready to fight. What about Rashad? Rashad? Yeah. Still healing. TJ Grants, any word on from TJ? Mm -hmm. No, I don't. I don't know uh, how he's doing. Alistair Overy? Somebody does. Somebody <laughs> in my office knows. <laughs> Anything about Alistair Overy? Um, Maybe versus Junior yeah. DeSantis? I don't remember what it is off the top of my head, but he's fighting soon. What makes tough Latin America different to all the other toughs that you've done in the past? Well, that's, that's a market that I've been dying to get into. It's a market that when we bought this company, I said the United States, you know, UK, Ireland, um, and Mexico were all no-brainers. And now... That the, the fights are we're ha we're in four. this this week will be fight number four. Mm. Holy shit! Yeah, these guys are you know these guys want to win this thing so bad, and just the it's just such a different mindset. It's gotten to the point now where you know some of the guys in, in America are spoiled by it, and you know there's so much UFC and, and you know these guys come on to the show. These guys are so crazy about. Them. I mean, guys went to the fight and they they cried at the last show crying that they're at the UFC and like they have the opportunity to possibly make it and you know it's just it's another level man it's what I it's what I always thought it would be and uh, how's Kane um, he's you know, awesome the he's a great coach and obviously Verdum is a great coach so I mean they couldn't be with better guys it's a great season already I will not miss one of those fights <laughs> on this season of tough when do you think you might get another tough here in Europe which, whichever country it is Gary and I were talking about that yesterday too we, we uh, you know, remember when I always told you guys that we wanted, well, I wanted to, it was my idea to, to do these, uh, do them in all these different countries and then do like, like the World Cup. It's like the World Cup, so he'll be, he and I were trying to figure that thing out yesterday, talking about how that might work. And instead of going with everybody, you start with three countries. You start with three countries, Germany possibly being one of them, and you, uh, they fight and then the winners fight each other, so... It's it's we're getting there. What were the other two countries that ended discussions apart from Germany? England, England, England obviously was one of them, and then uh, Sweden. Well, Sweden. Yeah, I mean, Sweden would make a lot of sense too, <laughs> you know. And, and maybe there's four, and, you know. But yeah, it, it's getting a lot closer to reality now. A with you know uh, all the work that Gary and his team are doing out here, and B with with all the all the talent and and the uh, you know. Uh, the demand now in Europe. Just staying on tough for a second, um, the new season coming up, I think it's season 20 with Pettis mm -hmm. and Menendez, have you made a decision yet on whether the women will be split up into teams? The only reason I ask that is because it's more of a knockout tournament going for a title as opposed it's to... It's a great fucking question. You'll have to wait and see. <laughs> You'll have to wait and see how that plays out. Great question. Okay. Yeah, we did some serious thinking about that one. <laughs> Phil Harris, who was released from the UFC, was then brought back two or three weeks later to fight Neil Siri. What was the thinking behind that? Surely there was other signed 125. I don't know. I got no answers for you today, huh? This is bullshit. <laughs> I don't know. Sean and Joe probably, for whatever reason, they did it. I don't know. Dana, your yeah. friends at Bellator, obviously, um, Eddie Alvarez had to pull out of his fight recently due to concussion. Um, there was rumours of possibly a get-out clause that he might have now. Uh, has there been any contact made with Eddie Alvarez? None. Nope. And I don't worry about Bellator. <laughs> Ever. 
In your coma, was fighting with the injury against Tendo. Have you heard about this? No. What was it? The knee injury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, I knew that. He talked yeah, well, about. He, uh, he tweaked his knee before the fight, yeah. but then he, he got cleared 100. percent So. He talked about TCL, something like this. Have you heard about this? Mm -hmm. Since he got problems with his TCL. Yeah. Yeah. He's okay. Yeah. He's okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any updates on the German TV band for the UFC? We're getting close now. Things are getting better here, and uh, you know it, it's not as negative as it was. It's it's very positive here, and you know it's it's no different than than any other place we've gone where people have you know there's a lot of misconceptions about the sport, and uh, you know that's that's our job. Our job is to get in there and, and squash all those misconceptions, not just about the sport, but about the athletes who compete in the sport too. And how important is it for you to solve this problem, to back up your problems, to come back to uh, Berlin every year? Well, it's important. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, we want to get on, on television here, as we want to get on television everywhere we go. Um, but it's looking good. It's looking good. Not, not only is it looking good here, it's looking good in France, too. So we're getting close here. We're getting close in France. And the one thing that I always say, say to everybody, it's like, As the younger generations keep coming up and coming up and coming up, this just gets easier and easier and easier. Um, you know, not everything is going to happen like that. Things take time and work, and we're here to, to do the work and put in the time. So, is it the happen. free? Is it the free TV station in Germany or? Yeah, I, well, we'll take any TV station right now. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> free or not free or whatever it's going to be. But we're, we're just working on on on. Uh, clearing the air and, and, and educating these guys on what this sport and what these athletes are really all about. Okay. Speaking about fight pass, um, I've heard you say in the past that every time you do a fight pass card, the numbers spike up a little bit. Right. Have you been seeing that trend this week leading up to this one too? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, obviously, you know, you're going to have the you're going to have the guys who are going to jump in and, uh, and buy during fights and then jump back out, you know, and as we continue to grow fight pass and we sit down in these meetings, we talk about How do we keep these guys engaged, you know, and, and how do we make Fight Pass better and how do we make it bigger and, you know, it's, it's, uh, Fight Pass has been phenomenal for us. It's, it's, it's exceeded our expectations and it's the future. You start to obviously stream these scrums on Fight Pass too. What more content or what new content can tons, Fight Pass fans can expect tons. in the next We got tons of new content yeah. coming right now. So while, while we're building and, and, and you know making fight pass dialing it in to make it the best we can possibly make it we're also creating tons of new uh content for it too you know the difference wwe when they when they launched their network mm -hmm. vince had been working for years on launching an actual real network so he had a ton of content you know ready to shoot into the pipeline we're, we're, we're starting to build our, our idea was let's let's give everybody access to our um to our library The entire library, every fight that we have, um, UFC Pride, you know, Strike Force, etc. Um, and then we said, well, let's also put some fights on, you know, these fights that we're doing throughout Europe. And then now we're starting to add content, and you know, it's the future, man. It's, it, it is absolutely the future. I spoke to Mark Ratner earlier on <coughs> uh, about you know, plans for UFC in, in India. I've always bring up in these European scrums. Um, he said, obviously, the TV deal is already in place, um, but it won't be this year. It'll be 2015. Um, can you give any update in terms of what challenges you're facing to finally launch in India? Yeah, we've done. You know, we've done the same thing there that we've done in Mexico and other countries that we've launched, like China. You know, you go in there, you start looking for talent. You start getting some talent trained and get them working. And, and uh, same thing we did in Mexico, and, and we're going to do it in India. And, and I'm very confident that we're going to do well there. There's lots of different uh, Indian populations in, in the UK, in London specifically, in the Midlands, uh, in Toronto and Vancouver, yeah. um, with a lot of MMA fights coming out of those countries. So would you maybe think about getting um, second generation Indians that aren't actually born in India but can speak the language um, that have maybe grown up in, in the Western world and in, in, you know, you know, in the first world countries with MMA kind of camps? I'll take any Indian who can fight and, uh, you know what I mean, I'll take them, anybody. Uh, you know, you have to start somewhere. So it's, again, I, 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 I I, I equated to Mexico, you know. We, we, had, we have some Mexican-Americans like Kane, whose parents were born there. He speaks the language, um, you know. But you know, and I know, you don't really hit that market until you get a real guy from that country, you know. Second generation is great. They appreciate it and everything else. But when you get a guy from that country who goes in, kicks ass, and wins a world title, 
that's when everybody notices. Will you be having an eye on Ben Askren today? Hmm? Will you be having an eye on Ben Askren today? Uh, his oh, fight at Born FC, yeah. This is debut. Apparently not. I didn't even know. <laughs> um, no, but good luck to him. He's under contract with somebody else, you know. So. Do you think he'll uh, he'll fight in the UFC one day? I don't know. We'll see. Do you think the um, the UFC 175 card, given the fact that you've got so many of your marquee big names like Machida, Weidman, Belfort, Sonnen, Ronda Rousey? Uh, Faber, I believe, is also on that card. Do you think it could break a million buys? I hope so. I mean, that'd be <laughs> great. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's obviously a strong card on a big weekend. We always kill it on that weekend. Um, you know, the expo, there's just so much going on that weekend that it's... Uh, and this weekend's awesome. I mean, uh, this one, uh, every year we do it a little bit better and a little bit bigger. So the, for the people that are coming, I mean, they're going to have a blast that week. You know, as we get better at doing that, uh, that International Fight Week. And, uh, yeah, I think that card's strong, and I, I think it's going to do very well. I think it's going to probably be uh, right up there, other than Jones Gustafsson is, is one of the biggest of the year. Now that you've had some time to digest uh, what happened last weekend, are you still going to stick to Matt Serra GSP as the biggest upset of all time, or do you think Tita Dillashaw um, is now the number one in terms of biggest upset and shock? Yeah, it probably is. Well, the GSP one was pretty big. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to discount that one. I mean, it was a pretty big upset. Yeah, it was. And, you know, especially when it was, you know, if, if you remember back to that time when uh, <laughs> when uh, we did that show, it was called, you know, The Ultimate Fight of the Comeback. People were like, this is crazy that a guy gets to come off this show and gets a shot at the title. It just makes no sense. And when it was Matt Sarah, people were like, poor Matt Sarah. He's going to get hurt in this fight. And he comes in and knocks GSP out in the first round. Pretty, it was a pretty big one. But going back to Dillashaw, do you think that's one of the, the greatest performances as a whole? Oh, without the, the greatest. Yeah. The greatest performance. I mean, everybody, you ask anybody who was there that, and then to be there live in the arena that night was insane. I mean, that place was going crazy. And there were a lot of Brazilians there. There were a lot of Brazilians there. Um, so it was really, it was a fun night. What do you think is going on with the Brazilian fighters? Um, I think uh, a couple of years ago, you had four Brazilians as UFC title holders, and now it's built down to just the one with Aldo. What do you think's got? What's, what's well, there's a lot of great fighters, man. There's a lot of great fighters. You know, as we get bigger and more global, and guys coming from all over the world, and you know, and these camps, some of these camps that are, you know, set up now with all these monsters in it. You know, it's it's tough to hold on to the belt. It's tough. You know, you had the days where where guys held on to the belt forever, and doing it today is so much harder than it used to be. Yeah. It's going back to Dillashaw for a second. One of the things he spoke about was how much he uh, um, looked at Dominic Cruz's footwork uh, and, and his footwork in the fight. Is, is everyone's been raving about it. Um, what about Dominic Cruz? He's, he says he's maybe three, four months away from fighting again. I hope that's true. You know, um, I've been waiting for Dominic Cruz for two years, so whenever he's ready, obviously, you know, we're ready for him. Then after the Jamie Varner fight uh, at UFC 173, you said that had you been in the corner, you would have thrown in the towel. I and mean, then you've got cases where, for example, uh, Nate Diaz, Josh Thompson, where the towel was thrown in and Diaz was critical of it. When do you think is the right time to throw in the towel? Again, people were asking me that night about that fight. Should the ref have stopped it? Should the corner have thrown in the towel? You know, Jamie Varner could quit himself, too. You know, you can tap out with honor in the sport. Hey, my, my, my leg's broken. What do you want me to do? Right? Uh, he didn't. You know, but it's also... I was talking about that moment with Gustafsson, and, and Matt Brown had it a couple weeks ago, and Jamie Farner didn't win that fight, but he had his moment. I was sitting there going, holy shit, he got up again. Holy shit, he got up again. You know, I just I couldn't believe it. You could tell that that ankle was broken or there was something really wrong with his foot, um, and he kept getting up. And, and again, when you talk about people buzzing about you, people were talking about that for three days. You know, um, you know everybody has the opportunity to have a moment of glory when you're when you're in a professional sport. And <coughs> in a weird way, that was his, you know? I mean, everybody was talking about Jamie Varner after that fight. I mean, you're asking me about him now. Whereas if that was just a regular Jamie Varner fight and, and it went to a decision and nobody would even be talking about it, but it, it was pretty impressive. That was Crazy, <laughs> yet impressive. That was his third straight loss as well, though, but are you going to give him another shot considering how much? Yeah, well, I don't think we're going to cut him. <laughs> we're going to keep him around for a little while. Okay.
That was amazing. With Burrell losing last weekend, um, who is now your number one pound for pound fighter in the world? Got to be John Jones. Because that was my big argument was it, yeah. was it Burrell or Jones? <laughs> it's Jones. Did you, hear, did you hear about Henan Burrell's welcome when he came back to Brazil? Did, did he? When he, went when he got back? A massive welcome, like. Was there really? Yeah. Like well, that, he won. But that's he, awesome. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Dana, there's yeah. been a rumor floating around with Joe Rogan will fight them in the UFC. Yeah, that's so f- <laughs> <laughs> but It came from this website that I won't even mention, but I'll tell you this. That same website said that Ronda Rousey was pregnant, <laughs> she was going to continue to fight while she was pregnant, and I got her pregnant. <laughs> okay? Okay. That's the website that said that. So Fair enough. If you believe that, you'll believe just about anything. <laughs> You, you brought that Peter Sabata after he had quite a hard year last year. Was he somebody that you had an eye on after you uh, cut him from the UFC back in, up in 2008? Well, you know, the great thing about this sport is that, you know, getting cut from the UFC isn't like getting cut from the NFL or I don't, I don't know a lot about soccer, but I would assume soccer too. When you get cut, you know, you really can't come back. And this sport, you can be cut from the UFC, you go get a few more wins, and you come back, and, uh, and you get another shot, you get another opportunity. Um, so, you know, I, 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 I like that kid, you know, I like his story, and for whatever reasons, you know, Joe Silva and, and Sean Shelby brought him back. What's, what's that stake? I answered your question, but I hope I did. What's that stake tomorrow night for Munoz and Focus uh, from Musasi? It's a big fight. You know, these are you're talking about two guys. You know, with, with the MMA media, Musasi is number ten one day, and then he's number eleven the next day when he didn't even fight or nothing happened. You know, but uh, obviously, for Musasi, beating him solidifies him in that top ten. You know, uh, six or seven. I think Musasi is actually six or seven ranked in that division, where he should be anyway. You know, he, he had a year off with uh, ACL surgery comes back and fights the number one contender, Machida, to a decision, and he drops to number 11? You fight mm. number one to a decision and you drop to number 11. It doesn't really make sense. Mm. Um, but obviously, if Mark Munoz goes in there, and, and, and you know how this fight's going to go. He's either going to knock Musasi out on the ground or Musasi's going to knock him out standing. One of those two things are going to happen. And obviously, it's big for both guys to get, get into that title contention. Oh, uh, we spoke to Luke Rockhold yesterday. Um, he said that um, he might be perf- um, taking part in the Meta Morris um, competition uh, in a few months. Do you have any problem with any of your fighters being involved with uh, you know other sort of combat sports outside of the UFC? Yeah, I do. Um, obviously, you know that that's different. That's not really a combat sport. It's a, it's a jiu-jitsu tournament. Um, but injuries can still happen. Y- yeah. So. It's very, it's very dangerous for these guys to do stuff like that because if you do get injured, you know, you're going up against a guy who might hold that, that, that arm a little too long, and I don't know if they do leg locks, but if they do, you could get your knee blown out. Uh, obviously, a lot of bad things could happen, but, you know, if, if, he, if he's doing it, he must have got the okay from, from Joe. Um, staying on Rock Culture for a second, he's been quite vocal um, this past week on, on Vitor um, saying that he thinks he's been dirty his entire life. Um, there's always a red, red flag with Vitor. Um, what do you make of his comments regarding Belfort? Hey, well, that's, that's you know, obviously these guys are going to have their opinions. You know, the media the media and the, uh, and the fans have definitely, you know, singled Vitor out and gone after him. Um, I can tell you this, and I've said it a million times, I'll say it again. He was tested every time that he was on the, uh, you know, we went after him too. I said one day at one of these scrums, trust me, we're going to test the shit out of Vitor Belfort. And we did. You know, and the guy always uh, was always where he was supposed to be. And, uh, you know. If Vitor doesn't get his license at the hearing um, in a few weeks' time, do you have a plan B for Sonnen? Um, no, there's no plan B. The other fighters be pulled from the card. Right. Do you think that I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, you know the results of the random drug test I was taking at the MMA Awards. Do you think that should play a factor in anything to do with him getting a license in the Well, you know, a lot of the media is talking about it, but he- here's the reality with that test. You know, doctors 
doctors disagree with the results of that test. Yeah. Which so doctors? Doctors that matter <laughs> disagree with, with, with the result of that test. And here's the problem. The problem is this. Nobody knows what the fuck they're talking about when it comes to TRT and the testing. It's the main reason it had to go away. If you talk to three different doctors or you talk to different commissioners, everybody has a different opinion on it. Nobody knew what the hell they were talking about, you know? <coughs> and uh, when it's like that, it's, it's got to go away. It's too big of a problem. It's a nightmare, you know? And there were only, you know, I told you, ESPN did that story that it was rampant in the sport. I have 500 guys under contract. And you had Chael, Vitor, Henderson, um, Henderson and there's one more. Frank Mir. Frank Mir. Yeah. You had four guys taking it. Four guys were taking it out of 500 guys under contract. And it's rampant in the sport, you know? And now we got three guys that we're dealing with with it, you know? Henderson got off it. Chael got off it. And now Vitor's off it. So... Some of the Hannibal Rouse teammates at Nova and Yao have been uh, critical uh, of the UFC, saying that the UFC sort of forced him. <laughs> yeah, this is how we forced him. We called him up and we said, uh, hey, uh, we'd like Aldo to fight on such and such a date. Aldo said, yeah, I can't because I have to get my neck thing. He's got a neck thing that he does every time he prepares for a fight and it takes him a little while to get ready. I said, all right, how about Aldo? Uh, or how about uh, Baral? They said, okay. Yeah, we'll take the fight. Okay. Uh, who, who gives a shit what his fucking friends think? I don't. So, mm -hmm. if a fighter gets injured like Dominic Cruz and uh, is out for two or three years, uh, do you see help them with money or anything, or is this just a problem for the fighter? Um, depends on the situation. But yeah, we help. Okay. Dana, we saw two weeks on the Ultimate Fighter to judging again, scandalous uh, judging. I think it was two weeks ago. What is the situation now with your relationship with the Nevada State Athletic Commission since Keith Kaiser has, has left? Has it improved or is it still on the same <laughs> no, we level? Have great, we have a great relationship, yeah. Um, you know, they got a new uh, executive director in there. I, I like him very much. Um, and I, I just think the commission's doing a much better job already. Uh, already doing a great job, so yeah, I'm happy. Is it? Do you or Gary Cook have some uh, <coughs> meetings with Polish fighters I'm from Poland? It's very close to Germany. Do you have some meetings with any fighters outside of UFC who would like to join UFC? Meetings? We should, yeah, like speaking, talking, talks about contract, contract meetings. Are we? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. It could be, but I'm not sure. You know, Joe and Sean would be handling that. Is it weird for you to be entering all these new markets around the world, yet you still can't crack New York? No. <laughs> it's not weird because I know exactly what's going on. It would be weird if I was like, what's going on here? Why are we not getting into New York? I know exactly why we're not getting into New York. Is it disgusting? Is it gross? Yeah, it is. But it's not weird. It's anything but weird. I know it's a dream of yours to hold an event in MSG. That's mm -hmm. why. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's going to happen. This gonna year? Happen. Next not year? this year. <laughs> <laughs> not this year. One more question about Mr. Sabata. Would you say that this is his last chance to be a UFC fighter? <coughs> it's never it's never a last chance. Like I just said a few minutes ago, in this sport, you know, you lose, you go out, you win some more fights. I think guys continue. Look at Robbie Lawler. I brought Robbie Lawler into the UFC when he was 20 years old, right? I saw him fight in Hawaii. I signed him. He came in, you know, blew everybody away, was explosive. You know, he lost a bunch of fights in a row. He left the UFC. Look where he is now. You know, you never say never, man. Not in this sport. A few months ago, Bobby Razak um, held a special screening of the Mask movie uh, here in London. Amazing. Um, Was it? Amazing movie. Um, he's now um, shown it to a few of the studios uh, in L.A. Um, you're featured on that film a little bit, too. Um, with the movie potentially coming out towards the end of this year, can you just kind of reflect back on some of your moments with uh, with Mask? Yeah, no, he was a, he was a great person and uh, very passionate about uh, about the sport. And uh, you know, it's funny because we we always liked him, and as the sport started to grow, we kind of came up with him. You know, we were very close to him and, and had a good relationship with him. And um, 
you know, it's one of those stories where as soon as he started, he put in all the hard work, and as soon as the thing started to break and make some money, you know, he passed. And Joe, you haven't seen the movie, though, have you? No. I'd recommend getting in touch with Bobby. He's in LA. You're in Vegas. Try and get a screening. It's I'm sure amazing. it'll pop up. I'm sure I'll end up seeing it. Yeah. Uh, Joe, I'm talking on the podcast about how the old pride gloves had a more of a curve to get rid of poking in the eye. Mm-hmm. Have you looked into redeveloping the UC? Yeah. The so, pride so we we did. We, we, we looked at curved gloves. They're curved like this. And all you gotta do is go like this. And you can open them wide open. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's not about the glove. What needs to happen is, when a guy starts poking in the eyes, the ref needs to say, close your hands. If you open your hands one more time, I'm gonna take a point. Believe me, guys will start closing their hands if they're gonna lose the fight. Do you think a point is enough for an eye poke? An eye poke will completely change the fight, or would be being completely change your career? You're right. But there's open finger gloves in the sport. From 2001 to 2007, 8, there weren't, there weren't eye pokes. You know what I mean? Do you remember ever being tons of eye pokes back in the early days when we started this thing? There wasn't. You know, guys are starting to, you know, do this thing with their hands. The ref needs to tell them, close your hands. If you don't, if I tell you one more time to close your hands, I'm taking a point. He opens his hands, take a point. Boy, guys will start closing their hands. That I promise you. You lose a fight because you keep your hands open, you're going to close your hands. Do you think there even should be a warning though? Because the body shouldn't know the rules before they even go in there. Yeah. And that, that's a very good point. You know, when, when the guy, when the refs go back in the dressing room before the fight and say this, that, and everything else, if you open your hands, if I see your hands open toward a guy's face, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a point. It's the same thing in football, though. If a, if a, if a footballer tackles someone with studs showing uh, above knee level, it's a straight red card, and they know the rules going into the game. Yep. So again, I agree. Surely the fighter should know the rules, and it should be enforced yep. strictly. And that's it. The, the refs have to take a hard stance on that and start really sticking it to the guys. And believe me, you'll see some hands close real quick. One fighter that's been criticized but never had a point taken away is actually John Jones. People were cri- he almost rested his hand on top of Glover right. to share his head and not a single point was taken away. Is that something you disagree with? Um, yeah, uh, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm the one that's saying right now they should start taking points. But to, to be fair to John Jones, John Jones did it a couple times and then he stopped doing it. You know, people were playing it up like he did it the whole fight, which he didn't. He didn't have his fingers near his eyes the whole fight. There was one real bad one when we showed the replay, and it looked like his fingers like went inside his eye. Yeah. Um, and then he didn't do it again after that. Is John Jones a dirty fighter? I would not call John Jones a dirty fighter. John Jones does things that are legal, absolutely legal. Um, you know, and there, there's been situations where lots of guys have had their hands open near. And, and people were playing it up like John did it the whole fight. He didn't. Um, and no, he's not a dirty fighter. He can just he gets away with things, you know, because he's taller. And that was why I said everybody, you know, criticized him. But for the first time when he went up against Gustafsson, I said, here's a guy who's not only as tall as John Jones, he's taller. So let's see what happens. Yeah. Dana, the, uh, the International MMA Federation based here in Europe, they're having their very first amateur world championships uh, during fight week, and uh, you guys have uh, kindly allowed them to hold uh, the finale um, at the UFC Fan Expo in the Mandalay Bay. Mm-hmm. Um, how important is the IMMAF, and how closely is the UFC working with them? Well, not just them, but all the, uh, you know, uh, Olympic Judo, Karate, Taekwondo, all the martial arts, you know. Th- that's what we're doing with International Fight Week. We're, we're opening it up to all the martial artists and, and, and all the fans of martial arts to come down in one place, you know, the fight capital of the world for one week, and it's everything fighting, everything combat sports, everything martial arts. That's that's the future uh, goal of, of fight week. These amateur world championships, though, it seems like it could be the framework of what could potentially be an, an Olympic sport down the road. Right. Um, and that's why I was kind of asking, how Great question, yeah. and you're right. You're, you're, can you're you see it being right. an Olympic sport in four years, eight years? It yeah? should be now. Um, but yeah, I can. We'll see. We'll see if it, if it happens, you know, during our lifetime, but it should. It's been reported that Ryan Nelson is going to fight Mark Hunt in Japan. Is that confirmed? That's true. I don't know, I don't know if it's confirmed, is it? Yeah, it's confirmed. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. that's... And what's your thoughts on that fight? I love it. That's why I made it. That's one. That was one of my fights that I wanted to do. Um, I love that fight. That's going to be nasty. Is there a potential number one contender in that fight? Do you think? No. no? 
Dana, there's a, there's a lot of Finnish fans here. Is there uh, any chance that the UFC is coming to Finland? You've been successful in, in Sweden. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier. Yeah, we, believe me, we know. We know how popular it is up there. There's so many places, you know, we still want to go and we're working on it. Mark Mooney was, uh, was talking this week about Philippines, how he desperately wants... Well, I know, well, that's, that's a place we were supposed to be three years ago. What's happened? Why hasn't happened? So, right when we were planning on going to the Philippines, we had a major sponsor down there, and that was when, you know, the economy crashed all over the world and obviously that fell through and didn't happen but you know fighters we've sent there on trips it's just George St. Pierre went there once and they had to have the police come and the police had to take him out uh, Chuck Liddell same thing and it's just like it's crazy it's big in the Philippines man huge it's just a matter of getting there now I just got back from the Philippines Dana um, I'm half Filipino um, I was out there I was looking for some UFC on the TV there was none. There was only one FC and Bellator. My fight pass did not work out there. What's going on? Yeah, I don't know what happened in the Philippines. You know, I know we're on the yeah. Balls Network. <laughs> oh, you know, yeah, uh, kicks or something like that. But yeah. there was um, what I got was um, the Ultimate Fighter, Chael Sonnen versus John Jones. That's what I got out there. They're they're behind the times. Yeah, I know. We're working on it. But they know who Mark Munoz is. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I know they do. Believe me. Saying there's only one Brazilian world champion now in the UFC. Do you think this is a, what do you put it down to and is that almost a bonus for the UFC? That is, is what? Is it a bonus for the UFC that you know most or one of the champions are American? I don't care who's the champion, I don't care where you're from, I don't care you know whoever's the best in the world that's who I want to be the champion so it doesn't matter where you're from. I mean I hear that shit. I was just hearing that shit in Bar with Barrow in the United States the stupid shit I hear. Yeah. He doesn't speak English. He's not handsome. You know, I don't know if you heard me, but I said, if you're here to see handsome guys speak, you're at the wrong fucking event. Okay, that's not what we do here. Um, Julio Cesar Chavez never spoke a word of English. Roberto Duran never spoke a word of English. Uh, Tito Felix Trinidad never spoke a word of English. Nobody gave a shit. Everybody wanted to see him because they were badass dudes. They weren't there to hear them speak. Do you, do you feel there's a power shift, though? Do you think, you know, mixed martial arts in the States is progressing do I think on and on? Yeah, as in the case where there's, you know, there's only one Brazilian champion and the rest are all American. Do you think, you know, it's improving in a level in the United States? It's overtaking Brazil nearly. Overtaking Brazil? Brazil, for the talent of fighters that are coming through. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think what's happening is, you know, with, with uh, you know, not just Americans, but as the sport gets global and gets bigger, you're going to see bad dudes popping up from everywhere. It doesn't matter whether they're Americans, Canadians, you know, Filipinos, whatever it might be. Um, yeah, it, it, it doesn't really matter. Speaking of Burrell, um I don't know if anybody's asked this yet, but um, you've had a couple of days to digest UFC 173. Um, are you leaning any particular way when it comes to whether you do an immediate rematch? Yeah, I don't know. I, we don't know yet. Okay. Yeah, somebody asked that earlier. I don't, I don't know what we're going to do. The good thing is there's a lot of options uh -huh. for that weight division. So. And then in terms of Jones, any updates on the contract situation with him? I, they asked that too. I said, call John Jones. <laughs> okay. We're All waiting right, for John. Late. We're waiting for John Jones. Okay. Have you played uh, the EA Sports game yet, Dana? I haven't yet. You haven't? No. It was funny because uh, I don't know if you've heard this story. Um, Gustafsson and Brad Pickett. Yeah, he told me. You told, you, you heard he the story? told me the story, yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty funny story, isn't it? It is, <laughs> yeah. It, Pickett's awesome. You know I love Pickett. Yeah. He's well, a funny guy. One of the things, staying, staying on the game for a second, um, some of the fans I've seen on Twitter have said, oh, you know, when the game comes out, there's a few fighters that aren't going to be available to play as characters. And, of course, TJ Dillashaw, you know, a champion, isn't in the game. Do you know if there's any plans to have downloadable characters down the line? Yes. Um, the guys who aren't on and guys that nobody's even talking about yet, because the landscape changes so much, there will be guys that will be... Uh, uh, what's his name? Um, Gunner. Gunner's not on it either, but he will be. He's he's already being worked on as a downloadable character. Cool. So yeah, we're we're all over that, and there'll be everybody you want in the game will be there. Cool. Uh, do you think the control for the doping, the banned substances in UFC, is sufficient? And are you planning to change that in some way? Yeah, I, I, I think that we have the uh, 
the best system in all of sports. I mean, we're, we're Vanderlei Silva just got caught. He didn't even fight yet. You know, yes, these they're chasing guys around. They're they're they're, they're pre-testing. They're they're uh, random testing. If you do anything in this sport, you will get caught. Update on the update on Junior Dos Santos on what's going to happen with Steve Amioch tomorrow night if he wins over in Brazil. Um. Yeah. No. I don't. I don't know. Obviously, Junior broke his hand. Those take a while, man. He's going to be a while before he can start punching and stuff again. So, um, and then obviously for Stipe, a win is always a good thing. You know, he's already one of the top ranked guys in the world at heavyweight, and I respect him so much. He he was going in against the number one guy in the world, Junior Dos Santos, and now he's fighting Maldonado. You know, so he's he's going down there. He took the fight. He's going to fight him in, in Brazil, and he's a stud. Pretty sure nobody's asked this. Is, have you ever thought about signing Caratano? I know he's a Golden Glory guy. You have Two monster. people asked that earlier. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> can't win. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I mean, is, have you ever thought about it? He beat, he beat Arlovsky a while ago, yeah. uh, and he's been doing fairly well outside the UFC. Well, what's, what's his record right now? I don't I have no idea off the top of my head, but... Uh, he beat Arlovsky and Arlovsky. No, I mean, how, how many has he won? Uh, at least at least two or three, am I mistaken here, guys? not more. More. Yeah, not more. He's been doing pretty well. Interesting. International circuit. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, anything possible. Especially, you know, us being over here a lot now and doing what we're doing in Europe. Yeah. Could you? <coughs> How about signing, signing more oh, fitness fighters again? again? Seeing the support Tom Ninima is getting here. Like Are you? It. I'm with you. Yeah. So, uh, any names you're looking at? Uh, no. Not off the top of my head, but like I say, as these guys, you know, this younger generation is coming up all over the world. And, uh, you, you know, it, it's just getting bigger and better. And as we start to get our game, you know, uh, really going over here in Europe and Asia and putting on more fights and there's going to be more opportunities. See, that's the thing, <clears throat> you know. When I hear stupid shit like people saying, there's too many fights, you're saturating the market. Are you out of your fucking mind? I mean, we're sitting here talking about all these places that, that people want us to go. And you got to have fighters. You got to put on fights to grow a sport and to get it bigger. And, to, and for new guys like the guys in your country and the guys in your country and all these other guys, you have to have opportunities for them to fight. So you can't, we couldn't possibly do enough fights. When it comes to breaking in a lot of these new markets, I'm sure you deal with a lot of misconceptions about mm -hmm. MMA. What are some of the strangest and most absurd misconceptions that you've heard? Well, there's people, I mean, there's a lot of people, po probably people that you know, if you ask them if they think there's ever been a death in the UFC, they would say, hell yeah. Right. You know, because in boxing, you know, six to seven guys die a year in boxing. So you would think, if you told somebody that in the 20 year history of the UFC, there's never been a death or serious injury, I'm sure that would blow a lot of people away. And then let's not even talk about the athlete, the type of people they think that participate in this sport have to be barbarians and, you know, when realistically this sport has, you know, the sportsmanship in this sport is second to none. You don't see it, you know, there's dance competitions where people are meaner to each other than there are in the, the, this sport, right? And when you go to the event, when you go to these venues and go to the event, when do you ever see fights in the stands at UFC events? It's happened in 13 years. It's happened a few times, and that's it. You know, you go to a Red Sox Yankee game in the United States, holy shit. There's tons of little kids there with their baseball gloves and the stuff that's being yelled and the fights that are going on. It's it's crazy, you know. Um, so I'm yeah, sure there's a lot of things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, soccer too. And What's been the response to the... Uh, Come on, you have another question? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else has asked me to ask. Uh, what's been the response to the Embedded series from fans that it's you've been seen? been fucking amazing. Yeah, people love it. So... Um, I'm really happy that people like it, and, and we're going to continue to do it. On seven, one seventy-four, or on no. yes, yep. only on pay-per-views. Yeah, so yeah. on the pay-per-views we'll do. Yep. Okay. Dana is a possible it's potential. Still, you know, I was talking about. Sorry, I was talking about. You know how much cheaper it is than prime time. Yeah. But it's still very expensive to do that show. Yes. The show's very expensive. Yeah. It's awesome. When, when you go back to Dublin, obviously, the card hasn't happened yet, but. Possibly next year, there's a huge demand for tickets in, in Dublin. The tickets are on sale next week, I think. Yeah. Uh, Would you do cons consider doing a stadium show because there's, you know, it's, there's, there's people reckon it's going to sell out in minutes. Is that July 19th? July 19th. Yeah. July 19th. 6th of June. 6th of June. 
Would you consider doing a stadium show in Dublin next year? Because of the demand for yeah, tickets? I, I know there's a huge demand over there. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, it's absolutely. We could. Um, I, I agree with you. I think that thing's going to sell out in minutes. Mm. The buzz about that show is insane. And not just in Ireland. I mean, everywhere. People in the United States are buzzing about that show. Would it be possible for... Uh the U- sorry. Would it be possible for the UFC to uh, show on RTE or one of the Irish uh, national broadcasters, or the BT Sport deal tie that up? Yeah, I, I think it's. I think uh, BT has the has the rights to it. Is that right? We're in negotiations. We're another broadcaster. Okay. You hear that? There you go. Speaking of TV deals, and Viacom just bought uh, Channel Five, um, which mm-hmm. the UFC broadcast on for the London show, and in the UK. Cage Warriors just struck a deal with Channel, Channel 4, which again, I like Channel 5 is another free-to-air national TV broadcaster. Um, do you think that the UFC could also get a deal like that, where you have BT Sport uh, and also a national TV broadcaster? You know, pr- Maybe. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. But it's not a bad thing with all these other guys getting getting TV either. It's not It's not a bad thing. More eyeballs on MMA. Yeah, yeah. it's good. It's good. Let, let, let some of these other guys start pulling their weight, you know? <laughs> Any update on Jimmy Manawa's next fight? Uh, no, I don't know. But I like Jimmy, so hopefully soon. Is that an Irish television station that you're in negotiations with? with? Yeah. It's an Irish channel? Yeah. yeah. We have some local uh, examples when UFC goes to several different countries, uh, the local promoters have problems and usually they, sometimes it happens, they move their events or, or cancel their events, but are you really interested in winning the competition with the local promoters because it will m- make you probably out of new options? Yeah, I don't, I don't really worry about local promoters, you know, local promoters are going to be as big as they're going to be. Um, you know, if you're an MMA fan, if you're such an MMA fan that you're watching local shows, I'm definitely pumped for the UFC to show up someday. So I, d- I don't really worry about that. Um, you look at how long we've been around and how much we've done and, and you know the fighters that we have here in the UFC and we'll continue to have um, and th- as we continue to get bigger. I, I, d- I don't worry about any other promotions. I, uh, you know, Anything they do and anything they're able to do, good for them. Uh, Floyd Mayweather gets 32. And hold hold on one second. And if if it weren't for these smaller promotions, these guys are giving these guys opportunities to get a record, make some money, and then someday hopefully make it to the UFC. So I don't look at it as a bad thing. It's a very good thing. So how much money yeah. is Floyd Mayweather? Yeah, made? yeah. <laughs> you know, you probably know yourself. He has a deal with 32 million dollars guarantee per fight. Right. Do you ever see UFC paying that kind of money? For God, I hope so. It's obviously a real good thing if that happens. You gotta, gotta look at boxing though. The, the, the difference with boxing is that, you know, they went in, Showtime made a power move to steal him away from HBO, and they paid him an ungodly amount of money. They lost money on the first fight. They killed it on the Canelo fight. Floyd Canelo killed it, uh, where Floyd ended up actually making close to or a hundred million dollars. Um, and then this last fight didn't do that well uh, as the other, uh, so as the Canelo fight did. But uh, like I said, boxing puts on one fight a year. And uh, yeah, I mean, if we have a guy, uh, a company that wants to get behind, you know, either the UFC or one fighter in the UFC, the way they did, you know, made that play against boxing, I mean, against HBO, then yeah, I mean, anything's possible. Right now, the way that the UFC works, when we do a pay-per-view and a guy is a champion, he bring he gets a piece of whatever you know whatever's brought in. So it's a very fair, uh, very fair system. Which what is the highest price you've ever paid? Five. All five, in. Yeah, like five five point something million. Did you uh, hear about the story that uh, uh, CB Dalloway was talking about? moving up and pay getting to that next uh, pay scale level um did you did you read that and and or hear about it um and if so like what do you make of that was he doing it the right way was he talking about money the right way about saying i want to go from thirty thousand to fifty thousand i don't think there's any wrong way to talk about money i mean it doesn't matter what you uh what business you're in who here doesn't want to make more money 
Anybody here that doesn't want to make more money? I was going to ask if I could borrow yeah. $100. Dollars. <laughs> Everybody you talk to wants to make more money, needs more money. It's always going to be a part of, of the, uh, you know, it's going to be a part of the conversation and, and what we do. It's always going to be here. Um, but going back to your question, one of the amazing things about what we're doing, you know, we paid a $5.2 million purse, you know, and we paid millions and millions of dollars to guys. Um, we've been here for 13 years. 13 years. Boxing's been around for 100 years. Um, football's been around for I don't know how long. Soccer has been here forever. We've been here for 13 years. In 13 years, we went from our first fight, we sold 3,500 tickets at the Trump Taj Mahal. We did a gate of like 105,000. And now just in 13 years, somebody made a five point something million dollar gate uh, purse. Um, you know, give us a hundred years and we'll see what we're paying. Who was it that you paid five point two million? That was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't talk about that. Okay. That's his business. Okay. What about or her business. <laughs> what about the Diaz brothers? Would you say that they were doing it the right way and or the wrong way in terms? Of That's totally up to them. They're both grown men. They're grown men. I mean, the Diaz brothers can talk about, you know, um, not being paid right. I mean. I don't know, what, what would you consider, what if I told you one of them made over a million dollars? Would you say he wasn't paid properly? Is that true? Well, what if I told you that? Would you say he wasn't paid properly? I'd say that's pretty darn good for an MMA fighter. There you go. I know, I know an event in Italy is very forward to both Frank and Lorenzo. Is there any update on potential event in Italy down the, ro down the road? So what's, that, what's that question? Uh, no, an event in Italy. Is Italy? Oh, you, you know how bad those guys want to yeah. fight in Italy? Oh my God. You kidding me? Yeah, they want one bad. Any news? Any update? No, I, I, I think that Lorenzo told me a little while ago he's very optimistic that it was going to happen. Just don't know when. But they want that bad, real bad. For you, what? Aside from entering new markets, what would you say are some of your, your the main goals you want to achieve with the UFC in the next five years or so? Obviously, you know, um, I want, I want to. Keep putting on all I care about at the end of the day. The one thing, there's a lot of shit to talk about when you talk about the UFC. And if you were really internal in the UFC, all the things that are being worked on, it's crazy, man. There's so many different departments and so many different things. And there's only one thing I give a shit about. And there's only one thing I'll ever give a shit about. And that's the fights. It's all I care about. I don't care about anything else. So obviously, the fights go hand in hand with the Fox deal. The BT deal, the global deal, um, you know, and all the other deals, the uh, Televisa deal, and all the other deals that we're doing around the world with these television companies. Um, and then the one thing that I care about are the fights, you know, and the live event. The fights and the live event. Um, I don't ever want you turning off the TV saying, nah, that sucked. I'm, I wish I didn't stay home tonight. I don't want somebody walking out of an arena saying, ugh. I don't know if I want to come here again, do one of these again, you know. So th those are the the only two things that I'm really focused on and that I really care about, you know. And this is bad to say because it's my company too, but everything else, I don't give a shit. I don't care. Let somebody else figure that out. When is it all? T-shirts, fucking this, that, and all these other things, and all the other shit that goes along with it. I'm, I'm not interested. Because guess what? Without the fights, none of that shit matters, you know. So that's really all I've ever cared about, and it's all I'll ever care about. You know, and I'm in a mode right now where, where I've just been, we've been putting on such unfucking believable fights, man. The fights, if you're a fight fan, it's just been the greatest year ever. I mean, we, and, and, and last year. I mean, last year was fucking awesome. And then this year, I mean, the fights, it's like I told the story a million times, but I'll tell you again, I was flying from New York, and I wasn't supposed to go to Cincinnati because we had shit going on in Vegas. I'm like, fuck that. I'm going to Cincinnati. And thank God I went to that fight. That's why I'm here today. There's no way I wasn't coming to this fight. There's no way in hell. And I'm going to be in Ireland, and I'm going to be at fight week, and you know, it's just it's my favorite thing about this business. How much do you sleep? How, how do you have all this energy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't sleep a lot, but um, I don't really need it. Yeah, maybe because you don't have a smartphone. Maybe you're keep keeping it old school on yeah, your phone. Maybe that's what right. it is. <laughs> well, you know, what more could you ask for? I mean, I, I, I got the best fucking job in the world. I get to go to all these fights. You know, I get to... Even stuff like, uh, you know, when we got here earlier tonight, 
you know, my production guys come and they're walking me through all the, we're, you know, we're doing all the production, all the vignettes and all the pieces on the guys. And, you know, I get to see all this stuff first and make the tweaks and do all the stuff. And just, I love it. I love it. I love fights. And I definitely love the fights that have been happening lately. When does it get all too much for, for Dana White? What's that? When does it all become too much for you? I don't see it happening, man. People have been, you know, predicting my burnout for a very long time. It hasn't happened yet. I don't see it happening. You know, the Meneers got me, had me on the ropes for a little while, but we beat that too. So I don't, uh, I don't see me slowing down. I love this shit, man. I love it. And especially, I mean, like I told you guys, in the arena for the Dillashaw Burrell fight, it was awesome, man. When we were in Cincinnati, you know, the football team, the Cincinnati Bengals were there and they were fucking running around. Everybody was going crazy. And it's just like, there's nothing, there's nothing. You know, you guys are fans and, you know, you know what it's like when you're in an arena at a great fight. And when you leave, you're just like, holy fucking shit, that was unbelievable. And I would, you know, the brown silver fight and then this last week, I mean, I've just been on, a, on like a fucking month high. It's been unbelievable. Do you have any regrets in the 13 years so far with the UFC? Any regrets with what? With the with anything in the, with the YouTube? Oh, I wish I could have done that. I missed opportunity. Fedor, anything? You know, all the things that I gave Fedor the best shot I could. I mean, I told you those guys lay in bed at night going, "Fuck, fuck, we <laughs> fucked that up." <laughs> um, I, I I did everything I could, and there's there, you know, if I made mistakes, I made plenty of mistakes. But I believe that all the right things and all the mistakes I made got us here. You know. Right or wrong, good or bad, it got us to where we are today. <clears throat> and Dana, speaking of that, I just asked you a moment ago, who could you see in the future, you know, becoming the head of the company, you know, <laughs> the forefront of the company, someone like Chael. Ch checking me out already? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think so would be Chael. fantastic. <laughs> He'd be fantastic. The thing is with Chael, though, is he, 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 he over-exaggerates too much and, and you don't know what's real and what's not. But Chael is obviously a passionate guy about fighting. He loves it and... Uh, you know, he's great. Yeah. And speaking of Chael, the ultimate fighter of Brazil, um, you know, Chael's mentioned on the show this season that there's a lot of high caliber, really high caliber guys, he said there's future world champions um, on the cast of the show. Uh, how do you view the ultimate fighter of Brazil this season and the talent that's in it? Yeah, well, the finale is, is tomorrow night. So there's definitely talented guys. And, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see how it plays out because I have some ideas with, with a couple of these guys. I was just talking about it earlier because I just went through all the stuff for that show. And, uh, yeah, it was a good season. I, I'm happy. Getting back to Chael for a second, have you talked to him about taking a role in the company at some point? Let me tell you what. Chael has so many opportunities right now, he wouldn't even have time. If I left tomorrow and they said, hey, we want you to come run this thing, he, he's got a lot of big opportunities out there right now. Who knows? Ch Chael, you know. Um, it's wide open for him. So maybe he, he's like, a, is he a Chuck Liddell kind of guy? Maybe yeah. he oh, he, the guy never turns down a fight. He never says no. Doesn't matter who we got. I could call him tomorrow and tell him he's fighting Kane. He'll take the fight. He says no to nothing. He, he's, he's the best, man. He's, he's, a, he's a great guy. But on the flip side, he's got a lot of opportunities that many don't. Speaking of opportunities, um, Ronda's been definitely taking her opportunities outside of uh, the sport of MMA. How much of a star do you think she can become? Huge. She's huge, man. And she's so, uh, you know, she's amazing. The most amazing athlete I've ever worked with. In every sense of the word. She's awesome, man. I'm going to, uh, the day that she walks away, I'm going to be bummed out. You know? And it's not just about the fights. It's about having the opportunity to work with somebody like her. It's been, I'm telling you, it's, 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 it's unexplainable how great it is to work with her. She's awesome. Uh, you're doing tough 20 right now. Do you see anybody with the star potential that she has? They're not. I, I, we're not doing it yet. Okay. We're, we're actually filming Tough Latin America. Okay. As soon as that's over, I start filming uh, that one. But okay. Yeah, the answer is yes. Um, there's tons of girls with great personalities, and I, I'm actually looking really forward to that show, too. Anybody in particular you, you know, that like stands out to you? As well, they, there's a lot of standouts, but now i got to see how they fight, you right. know? Standing out personality. We've had tons of great personalities in the Ultimate Fighter. Who can fight? Speaking of uh, women's mixed martial arts, uh, Misha Tate 
has you know publicly called, I think it was on UFC tonight two weeks ago, she wants Gina Carano fight. Is Gina, if she comes back to the promotion, is she likely to have a fight before a title shot, a warm up fight, Probably so to not. speak? I know that Gina wants to come right back and fight. You know? Is there any possibility of me and Ronda wants that fight too. Okay. Rhonda respects her very much and she says she's the reason I'm here. Um, so if Gina came back she'd fight Rhonda. Did you have that phone call yet? No. <laughs> Still on the list of things to do? Yeah, yeah, I've been a little busy this week. How much of a boost would that be for women's mixed martial arts to get a name like Gina Carano back into the promotion as well? Yeah, I mean I'm definitely uh, I'm definitely interested. That's why that's why we're talking to her. If she was to fight Rousey, would it be on pay per view? Or sorry, stupid question, obviously. <laughs> what, about, what about Cyborg though? Would she be, I mean, if she came into the UFC, would she get the same treatment that Gino Corona would be potentially getting in terms of a title shot straight away? I'm not even thinking about Cyborg. She's not even in my, not even, not even close to being in my thought process. But does it make things easier for the future, the fact that she has parted ways with Tio Ortiz as her manager? Um, Is that a step in the right direction? Uh, well, probably for her career, yeah. Not even talking about the UFC, you know. So, yeah, it would make a lot of sense. A lot of managers out there. Good? We're good. All right, boys. Thanks. 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 Thank you very much.